Hey, welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through uh, how you assign Modbus addresses to a variable that's been created or a tag that's been created inside of vBuilder. And then I'm going to go through the, uh, the example from our Modbus example page. It's a Visual Studio uh, form that uh, interacts uh, with our PLCs using Modbus communication. So we'll get started here, and you see that I've already got vBuilder pulled up. And we'll create a new uh, project, and we'll leave it its default name. And we'll do an auto setup. We'll just click next to this. And when we go to tags, it should already have created the I.O. tags for the device. And we want to use two tags in this example. The first one, we'll just let it be the, the D1 output. Um, and we'll make it remote writable so that Modbus will not just be able to um, to read the value, but it'll also be able to change the value. And we want to create a uh, tag as well. We'll call it my UI 16. And we want to make that one remote writable as well. And then we will hit OK. And now we can go to our Modbus tool. And this is the tool that actually links the tags to particular Modbus addresses. Okay, over on the left is where you assign uh, bits addresses, and on the right um, is where you assign all other data types their their addresses. So we will uh, select the D1, the out bit D1 that we talked about, and when I hit enter, you can see that it automatically assigns a Modbus address. You're not stuck with this address. You can use any address that's between 1 and 1,000 uh, that isn't already assigned to another variable. Um, and then this, uh, these over here get their own uh, list from 1 to 1,000 as well. So we'll select it, uh, my UI 16. We'll hit Enter. And you can see that it assigns it to my best addresses. Uh, they're the same number in this case uh, because it's a a 16-bit, the 16-bit and the 8-bit integers, um, they only need they only need one address. The floats in i32s they require two, and they be two sequential uh, numbers. And you can see that uh, we're displaying whether or not they're writable there. You can't actually change them by clicking here. You'd have to click uh, the tag area to, to bring up the menu, and you could adjust them there. But uh, we won't do that right now. Uh, but that's just for your convenience, so you can see quickly if they're they're writable or not. Uh, so I've got the two variables I want, and they're both of address 1, and we'll click OK. And uh, we'll go ahead and program the device and tell it to run. And in this case, uh, in this example, that's all we're going to do. We're not going to add any logic or anything. So we're, we're done with vBuilder at this point. And we'll pull up Visual Studio. And this is the example that you can find on our Modbus example page. The code's all there for you. Uh, and this is what it's going to end up looking like. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're first going <coughs> to check to see if there's another Velocio program already running. And we want to do that because uh, th they can't both have the, the port. Um, so, so we want to, if, if something else is open, we want to warn the user and uh, tell them they can close it out and then they can reopen this. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the status of the USB port and we'll display it here. And then <clears throat> we're going to get into uh, writing to the uh, the PLC, to sending a message to the PLC, and then receiving a message back from it. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use <clears throat> we're going to uh, try an example where we're writing a bit, either a one or a zero, and then we're going to be reading back from that same bit, and it's going to be that address one that, that that we created. And then we'll do the same kind of thing with the uh, UI 16 that we, we dealt with. And we'll, we'll be able to adjust that and write to it and then read the value back. Uh, so let's jump into the code. OK. So by double clicking this, it brought me to the uh, form load uh, function. And this happens af after the form is loaded. It, it does this. And what we're doing is we're checking the processes that are running on the uh, on your computer to see if any of them have these particular names, vFactory, vFactor Viewer, or vBuilder. And if they do, uh, we're going to show a message box 
and this is the text it'll give, and it's just warning the user that uh, something else is already already using this port. Basically, uh, go ahead and close that before trying this. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we want to uh, see if there's a, a PLC actually plugged into your computer. So you want to do that in two places. You want to be able to do that first when it loads to see if something's already connected. And then also you want to be monitoring uh, the USB ports to see if um, any changes are being being made there. Something's unplugged, something's plugged in. And in that case, you want to see if, if your list is updated. So the actual function you're going to be calling is this check cons. And you can see this is inside the on load. This is, this is called, so it does it there. And then uh, this function is fired anytime um, anytime a modification happens, something's unplugged or plugged in on your USB ports. This happens, and it'll also cause it to go to this check cons. Uh, there's some support functions here. I won't go through all the details. Um, but this is uh, check cons. This is that function. And what, it, what it's basically doing is it gets an, a list of um, <coughs> port names. And it's, it's wanting to find the name uh, Velocio.com. And if, if it finds that, then it knows that it's got one of our PLCs plugged into it. Um, at which point, we're going to take a serial port. Uh, this is a, a USB acting like a serial port is what this is. And it, um, it, it'll create this serial port, and it'll open it, and it'll also uh, create an event handler that uh, anytime data is received, it'll jump over to this function right here. Uh, so it'll do that, and then then something else we do when we're when we're checking the USB ports is we're we're going to the uh, update USB enable function, and we're either passing it a false or a true, uh, whether that's enabled or not. Um, and you can see that is right here, and uh, all it does is it's it's updating this status right here. It's uh, turning it green and saying PLC connected if it gets a true value if, if, if it did detect the PLC and if it received a false value here then it turns it red and says USB disconnected um, okay oh, okay and then we've got this data received function and that's right here and what it does is it, it takes the takes the byte data from that message and it passes it to this this function here, and this is where you're actually going to parse out your message, and you're going to see okay what what particular message type is it, and then what what's the actual data that I'm getting uh, that I'm getting back from the PLC, um, and I'll discuss that in a little detail in a second. And uh, we've got this function that actually sends a message, and we'll create the message in other functions, but then it'll just be uh, handed this array list. And it'll parse it into bytes and uh, actually send it uh, right here. It sends it on its way uh, to the PLC itself. <clears throat> and these send and receive functions, they do one other thing. Uh, the, the receive, you can see it in this little section right here. It parses your message and it puts it into this uh, message received, uh, which is this text box right here. So it, it's going to format it nice for you. And it'll tell you exactly what the message is you received. Um, and then the, the send does something very similar. Uh, right here, it parses it. Oh, and this is where it's actually sent to. Uh, it's assigned the message sent. So this text box right here gets that text. Um, so so you, you can know exactly what data is transferred. It's just a convenient thing. Uh, and then, then after this is are the the actual creations of the messages. <coughs> uh, there, there's four of them we're going to go through here, uh, and they happen based on you you clicking buttons. So when you click a the right bit zero button, it it uh, goes to, it goes here, and then um, it'll go to the right bit function uh, right bit message. And it will pass it the value zero. We'll go to, we'll go to that. And what it's doing is it's creating an array list. Uh, this is the actual message that's being passed to the PLC. Uh, it's a, it's going to be a list of bytes. 
and you see we were passing in a 1 for the PLC ID, and I, I didn't go over that in the uh, vBuilder section. I just left it the default of 1, but it's possible to give your PLC an ID other than 1. You can do that in vBuilder in that same screen, the, the Modbus uh, screen. Uh, but we left it a 1, so we're just going to use 1 here. And then the next thing is the particular Modbus command. And uh, th this is used to write a bit. Um, Modbus actually calls it write single coil. Um, then the next thing is the address, and um, we, we assign it the value 1, but when, when you're, you're doing this, you need to do a, a subtract 1 from whatever the address was. Um, and <coughs> so in our case, it's going to be a, a 0. Um, the, the, high, the high byte is first, and then the low byte. Um, and then to, to assign a bit, what you're either passing it a... FF00 or 0000. And FF00 is a an on that just says it's on. Uh, so if you passed a 1 in, which we did, um, which we would if we clicked here, it would cause us to pass in a 1, and you, you get into this function, and we go there, and we pass an FF00. Um, if, if not, if you to pass the 0, do the 0000. zero, zero, zero. Um, and that's your whole message. So it's saying it should either turn it on or turn it off. Uh, and then that's write, writes that send message function I told you about a minute ago. Uh, so we've just described both of these. And then the read function is similar. It's got its own function. And it's the same PLC ID. And we're sticking with the default there. And the command is different. It's a, it's a 0, 1, which, is, which reads um, a bit, or what Modbus calls read coil command. Um, it's, it's got the same address we were dealing with, <clears throat> and then you specify the number of uh, contiguous bits. So we, we just want one bit. So we, we just tell it a one. It's the high bit and then the low bit. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll run this example here. Take a second for it to start up. I'm just waiting for it to pop up right now. Hey, sorry. Okay, there we are. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll test this out. So I've got, I'm going to put a zero in it, and because it's tied to the output, I can see the output light turning on or off, but obviously you can't there. So I'm going to check what the value is. So I'm, I'm trying to read that same exact uh, address and you can see when I put a zero in there uh, just doing this doesn't change this value. I've got to actually read it back. Uh, you, can, you can see that's all working and you can down here you get the, um, the, the values that were actually sent and received. Okay and then we do something very similar. <coughs> I'll just keep that open for the moment. Uh, with the 16-bit values, so we're going to allow you to um, increment or decrement them using this up-down, or you can type it in, and then when you hit the right, it goes to uh, this write 16-bit message, and it passes in uh, whatever the value is of that up-down counter. And it does uh, the same uh, PLC ID, but its command is a type 6, and uh, what what you're just doing is you're uh, you're going to be uh, you're going to be writing to the address zero again. It was address one in vBuilder, but uh, we have to decrement by one for here, and then we're uh, dividing the number so that it go it can fit into two bytes. It, it originated um, as a i16, um, but we're going to fit it into two bytes. So we assign our low and our high byte and then that message is sent out. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the, the last one, the read uh, 16 message, and there's nothing passed into it, it's just a read message. And we can go there, and its, uh, it's command is type 3, and you're, you just assign it the address, and then uh, the amount of data that you're wanting. Um, I don't believe this is bits. I think that's that's incorrect. I think it's uh, just addresses. Um, 
so so that's it and we'll we'll go look at how that actually behaves let's just take a random number here we can we can write it the the value and then we read it back whatever it might be so you can see you can access your data here um, that's all there is to it let me know if you have any questions um, I'll, I'll lower down in this um, tutorial on this the page I'll, I'll explain how to deal with uh, things like floats or uh, i32s that sort of thing okay anyways thank you